I had a vision that I wanted us to be the, the number one pro bono law firm in the country. I, I've handled a variety of different pro bono cases over the course of my entire career. It's, it's always been one of the best parts of my practice and I've enjoyed it. I am immensely proud of what Patrick has done as the leader of our pro bono program. When I was in law school, the, the number one firm that I wanted to work for was Robbins Kaplan. And there are a lot of reasons for that, but one of the main reasons was because of its reputation for doing high-level pro bono work. Part of the DNA of this firm is uh, a commitment to pro bono work, and that commitment is shown from the top down, and it's supported from the top down. But that doesn't mean lawyers are micromanaged. Um, young attorneys are given the opportunity to handle their own cases from day one. We're co-counseling with the Illinois Attorney General's Office to attack you know, police reform practices in the city of Chicago. That's a case that a lot of firms, I think, might shy away from, and we absolutely you know, did not. And one of the things Patrick is really good at when we bring in a case like this is communicating with people what the opportunity looks like. And we find that when lawyers are working on, on cases and causes that they are passionate about, they're likely to do more pro bono work, they're likely to do better pro bono work. Well, Patrick created the space uh, in which we represent clients from the Harriet Tubman home who have been victims of domestic violence. And as new young lawyers come into our firm, Patrick has connected them with the what we call the Tubman Project to uh, give them an opportunity to be advocates for those women and uh, find ways of addressing the situations that they are in to improve their lives. Patrick Arns has been a, a huge supporter of our program and specifically uh, the survivors of domestic violence who seek our services. He has supported these first year associates in taking these cases um, and has really kind of modeled the importance of pro bono within private law firms um, and giving back to the community um, and helping survivors of domestic violence. There's a confidence that once you're an attorney here at Robbins Kaplan, you should be able to go out and help people, especially people that otherwise can't afford an attorney, to help them with the most important problem in their life. Whatever the issue, there's so much need out there that we encourage lawyers to find their passion. Uh, we'll help them find a, the right case or a clinic. Um, any range of uh, cases from uh, individual direct representation to high stakes impact pro bono litig litigation. Um, that's what our, our program is based on. Most recently, um, in May of 2017, I had the privilege of representing Pania Vang. It's the first case that related to a civil cause of action for sex tourism. At that time, Ms. Vang was only 14 years old. There was a, a brutal sexual assault that happened, and as the case got closer to trial, I was asked to come in as pro bono trial counsel. Best experiences of my career as a lawyer to be able to represent her in that case. My vision for the future is that we continue to strive to be able to say we do have the number one pro bono program in the country. It's tremendously rewarding to do the things that we get to do for um, our business clients. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm a religious capitalist. I believe that capitalism offers the greatest opportunity and uh, the greatest potential for the most people. But it only works when uh, those who have benefited from capitalism are willing to share that with others with the idea that you are going to help improve the lives of all.